In this tutorial, we're going to look at building and rigging a simple character. And we'll just talk through a couple of things that come into play when we're doing it that will hopefully make animation a little bit easier. But we're going to keep it simple. We're not going to add any advanced nodes or anything. Just simple uh, parent-child node relationships and uh, throw a few backdrops in just to make it easier to see what's going on. So first we have to make our character. So I've made a color to use for my sketch so it's easy to see. And then what I'm going to do is start drawing, but I want to not use the default colors uh, and we'll just have this be my line art color and we can start out with it as black if we want or you know I might change it a little bit later but that gives me a starting point. We'll add some other colors for our different fills once we get in. So I have a basic sketch in my project. Now as we start drawing this if we just draw it all on one layer and then start cutting things up and deleting points and working that way, I've, I find that to be, that is a way to work and I've done that in some previous tutorials, but instead what I want to do is I want to draw my layers as I need them. So we'll just start out with a couple layers first and then we'll start adding in more as we go. So with this I like to start on the left side of the body, start at the bottom and work my way up. So this will be my left foot, left lower leg, left upper leg, and then we have the right foot right lower leg, right upper leg, hips. That's, that's a start. Now I'll close that. So we've added in the layers. We can see that's just enough layers to, to see everything that's there. I'm going to turn on my light table. Now I can see that in doing so, I think I need to tweak my color here a little bit more for the sketch. And I'll just make it a little bit darker so that I can see what's going on with it. And that's why I like to use a uh, color for my sketch versus just using one of the defaults. Because if I end up using the default black later on in my thing and I've changed the color in my sketch, well, it, it just causes problems. So now when we are doing our different shapes or drawings, we're not going to worry too much about the fact that we'll have overlaps occurring at the knees and the hips and other things like that. We'll learn about auto patch and ways we can take care of joints later. But what is useful is to be thinking about I've drawn these circles at the joints because that allows us to be pre-planning for what we need. So this character you can see, you know, it's a stylized kind of cartoony little thing. It's going to have blocky feet as part of it. So I have the blocky foot that is going to be at the bottom. And if I end the foot like this, and we have the lower leg and I want to animate it. You know, I what I think if I decide that my character is wearing some type of pants or something, what I want to do here is continue up probably well maybe we'll end up adding more on oh, and I just drew on the hips layer. So let's undo that and go to our correct layer. Let's go to the foot. So what I'm trying to do is think about how I want my character's foot to terminate. So there I have the foot. Couldn't go in and draw the right foot as long as I'm drawing feet. And remember if I hit control option, windows, command option on Mac, and my active area is the camera window, then I can rotate my view to get easier angles for creating my drawings. Shift M, either platform will bring me back to my standard view. 
Now as I go to put in my lower leg, what I want to do is to think about, okay, how is it joining? And I'm going to draw that upper part. So now if I rotate the foot, we may end up having some ankle showing. Actually, instead of just kind of going all gumby, we're going to add in, it's gonna have some kind of pant leg on Oh, went beyond on the knee. If I'm going to give myself a guide, I probably should get a little bit closer to following what is there. So what I can do is add in some ankle underneath so I can rotate the foot on that. So that's maybe a sock or something. Now if we go to the right lower leg We repeat that same process. The right upper leg. Now as I bring this up, we create that full shape. Now you will notice I have turned on smoothing a little bit so that it just cleans up my uh, drawing a little bit as I work. So I might end up having to tweak these areas a little bit so that it gives me a better seam or I can work that joint a little bit more so it doesn't tuck in so much. So we might do a straighter line and then curve. When you want it to be really perfectly smooth, then what you need to do is draw a circle and make sure that circle is perfectly joined and your lines are lining up with that so that we have that full curve and circle happening inside of it. So now I can move on to my utmost layer that I have here, my hips. So if we use auto patch while we're joining this, then it's going to give continuous fill options at the knees and the hips. So we could use auto patch on that. And with the hips here, I'm going to add in so that will be kind of like pants and we'll have a little bit of lower body happening so that when I create my upper body, I can, as it moves, end up moving it and we'll see what would be kind of where here we can even just put a little line in. Yeah, we've got a belly button on our character. Now we need to add a few more layers and as we do this, So this upper body really should just be shirt. And now I have left hand, left lower arm, left upper arm, right lower, right hand, right lower arm, right upper arm, neck, head, and in a full character we would separate out all the layers of the head as well if we were going to animate it completely. So the eyes would be composed of multiple parts, the nose, the mouth, the ears, the hair, they would all be on separate drawing layers. Right now for this example we're just going to leave it at head. We'll explore doing a more complex head in a future video. Now, going down my line, well, I can draw the head because it's my active layer. So, with that, I'm going to put in some eyebrows, some basic eyes, nose, mouth, sides of the head, gonna pull this down, rotate a little bit, oh, not too far.
and we just put the lines in that we think we want for our character. I do find rotating to be quite useful while we're doing it. The neck, need to terminate that. Right upper arm, space bar allows me to scroll around a little bit. So if I continue, oh, I don't like that line. I'm gonna just zoom in a little bit while we do this. Tighten it up a little bit there. I'm going to come back and work on the shoulder once, once I have a better idea of what I want. So you can see this time, instead of just like on the legs, I'm taking my time here to try to get the contours that I want. So that hopefully the joints will move a little bit better for me. And we also will figure this out and do some modifications to our drawings as we oh, we'll have to do some modifications to the drawings as we work on it. and figure out did the overlaps that we create work for what we need on this character because every character is going to well, be a little bit different So we have to experiment with what is going to generate the best results. Now one thing, and I'm doing this on purpose, is I'm scoring out these joints here. And what we will find is if we have a joint like this, it's going to be difficult at times to figure out what we want. Now that particular line that I drew, if I extend this out and join it, we're going to be able to select. So I can select and it just selects that curve. I can select here. We can see it's doing that. So we'll have to do some erasing or add some points in as we eliminate a few of the lines while we're joining things up and remembering that H and J allow us to move up and down our layer stack so those commands can be useful for us to work. Uh, I want to go in the left hand. I notice I have a gap right there, gap right there. Those little gaps will cause issues when I try and uh, use my paint bucket and fill with colors. But now I've created my different layers and I've populated everything. Not really happy with the feet. 
Um, based on how I ended up going with this character, we're going to just create something a little bit different. I don't really like that either. Sometimes I, I feel the front view of a foot is always a hard shape to figure out what you're trying to do with it. And even then, I'm still not. I'll probably end up adjusting it later. So I'll have to. I'm sure I'm going to have to do some work with it because I really don't like those feet. But I wanted to do the ankles different versus just giving them Gumby feet. If it was all monochromatic, then that wouldn't matter. Now we need to add in some colors here. So with this, I'm going to just start from the bottom, shoes, and it gets to have blue shoes. Now we add in a new color here. This color will be for my socks, and the socks are going to be green color and now pants and the pants I'm gonna just put into and the brown color shirt Go for a bright color, and then we have skin, and the skin is going to be some weird kind of light yellowish teal, because why not? It's an animation. The eyes. Right now, we'll just go for orange. And hair. The saturation in that. Oh, forgot to hit a new color on it, so we'll just call this one hair. And then Choose my color. This is now my eyes. And I think that's enough. Now, well, so we can save our uh, color palette there. If we're so interested, I'm going to switch over to swatch mode because it takes up a little bit less room so I can now see all the colors very quickly on it to hopefully make it a little bit faster to start filling everything. So if we go down into the foot and grab the paint bucket, let's go grab, we've got shoes, so grab some. Put in some shoe color there, and now going to the other leg, lower leg, sock, sock. So I'm using H and J to wander through my different layers here. Now, we can start 
filling these areas. And once everything's colored, I find it's easier to go through and start. And I, I, I do like to kind of fill them, you know, the same color so I don't have to keep switching swatches the entire time. So I'll have to zoom in. As I didn't have, um, as I don't, right now it's set to close, well, close small gap here, which is useful until it's not. All right, so we go back to this view here. We're on the head, so we can fill each of the eyes. And I assume his. Now for the hair, this is where. Well, okay, I didn't mean to hit. Because we're now at no closed gap, so it should just fill. Okay. Turn off the light table. Oh, gotta finish filling the shirt on the shoulder. So light table is exceptionally useful when you are filling colors because it really helps you to see what you have or have not filled and which layer you're currently on. So it makes your life much easier in my opinion. Now I can go and I don't want to rid of all of that, but I do. Now, actually before we fill it, what we can do is, so we have that line there. I wanna get rid of some of it. Now I can go through and select individual points or I can just select Line here now if I go and select the little part that's remaining I can just get rid of that now oh before I get rid of the top though I should have filled it but it gives me an opportunity to introduce a new option which is called stroke and what stroke allows me to do as I work with it is I can draw Shape. Now it gives me this message, you've added a stroke, it won't be visible unless you choose show strokes. Okay. Now normally I would make that message go away, but for learning purposes I uh, leave it. Now if we hit K on the keyboard, that is show strokes. So we can just toggle K on and off. So that allows us to see and not see stroke. So it should be, but that point there is not quite touching. So I'm going to, now with the strokes visible, let me try again. I'll choose, so if I put my cursor right on, go point to point, now it should be, you should be able to do it. And apparently we have a gap somewhere that is throwing it off. But that gives me a little better shoulder. And now if we go over onto this arm here, this is where I'm first going to, so that'd be the right upper arm, get rid of that fill, get rid of that fill. And what I want to do, simply erase right there, erase there, now I can just select that, hit delete, grab the paint bucket, fill it, and um, which I don't want to fill it just yet. I want to erase it. Uh, there's something we will look at in the future, which we need for Auto Patch, which is our separate art layers, and that's where we're going to learn how we can separate 
our artwork onto additional drawing layers. So now if I choose stroke, start on that point, line up, pull that over to there, grab paint, and fill it. And just increase the close gap until it behaves. So now zoom out, turn off light box, we can see our character is there. I just want to take this eye color and turn it into... Okay, I didn't think yellow is going to work, but I kind of, kind of like where that's going with the yellow and the green. So we're going to roll with that. All right. Now I can see, turn off my sketch. And now I have a character drawn out waiting for me to do something to it, namely start organizing it in the node view so I will create a rigged character. So this is the first start. Now if I don't want, if I'm not going to use auto patch, I can go through and carefully delete some of these lines at the joints so that it appears to be a little bit more seamless, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. Because the goal is first let's get the character rigged and then we'll look at some more complex options that are available to us on that. I'm trying to keep things simple to begin.